the note with the fro and we talk five days a week here on aristotlefullthrottle.com you can go there you can subscribe on youtube you can go to twitch.tv slash aristotlefullthrottle you can go to twitter all of the things it's demarcated on the screen if you're watching visually with your eyeballs you could be listening orally i'll give you an oral report of this show you guys you can do all the things five days a week 12 p.m pacific standard time today we're talking like we talk every day <laughs> we're talking about movies mostly and we talk about popular culture we also talk about culture in general and where the state of the culture is and hopefully we can help influence and be thought leaders for the future of humankind teach people to be considerate use critical thinking skills and empathy let's teach those skills let's proliferate that instead of the lies that we get every day come from the top down we live in a democracy here in the United States. We like to move upward through it, not from the top down. Guys, I'm very excited. I went to the beach yesterday, and I feel very relaxed. Almost too relaxed. Almost relaxed enough to not want to do anything for another week. <laughs> but I am excited to be here, as I am always. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I've just heard back from my... Uh, friend who, uh, let's see if he is, uh, let's see, this replies literally four minutes before I mean, uh, let's see, let's see, yeah, well, hey, we might have a surprise guest, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm letting him know, would you, uh, let's see, Let's see if we have a magical surprise guest today. This might be very exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very exciting. Who do you think it is? Let's take some bets. Let's take some guesses. Uh, let's see what they're doing. Let's see here. <laughs> we don't have a show planned. Uh, talking about... Extreme actors. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this happens. Let's see if this works. Otherwise, we'll just continue carrying on, drinking our coffee, having a chat with you guys. I don't see, uh... Let's see. Let's see. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Let's see. I I keep saying let's see. I, I sound like I'm Spanish speaking English. The Spaniards, they say, they say, a ver, a ver, a ver, a ver. Let's see, let's see, a ver, a ver. <laughs> so let's see if we get a special guest star, a special guest star today. Um, it could work. Could We'll see how it goes. If you guys are out there on Twitch, if you guys are out there on YouTube, let me know. Come on in the room. Let's have a chat. We're going to have a special guest, perhaps. Maybe. This is very exciting. <laughs> um, let me just chat with uh, live stream. I'll tell them we're, we're live streaming. You guys have any guesses who it could be? Let's see. Maybe not. Otherwise, it's just dead air. So anyway, I'm going to talk about some of the trends that are going on right now. There's some so many trends. Let's look at the trending. What's in current events, ladies and gentlemen? Ah, trending topics. I always get really interested by these. Trump Foundation. Oh, you heard they're, they're trying to get rid of the NRA, right? They're trying to get rid of the NRA. I don't know what's going on with that. Here we go. We're getting a special call. <laughs> hey. <laughs> special guest. Hey. Hey, how are you, man? Oh, wow, you're looking all fancy there with your DSLR. And your... I got the DSLR rocking. <laughs> you got the production value happening. I'm just here on my phone. like. <laughs> well, you know, that's good, too. We got, you know, do what you got to do. I, I, now I feel like I should be horizontal. There we go. 
I'm like, I'm like a part way there. I don't have the 20 millimeter lens soft focus thing happening. Though. I'm not quite there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. That, what are the, what's the next phone? Do you know the next, have they even advertised the next phone? I don't know what the Apple or who. Uh, yeah. I guess what, what kind of phone you got? Uh, this is an iPhone 11. Oh, uh, sweet. Yeah, that's the same one I got. And then I'm like, oh, wait, this doesn't have a headphone jack. I got to go get get my uh, my uh, AirPods. My- right. Yeah, I'm wondering. That's the thing. It's like I, I did want to – I mean, we can sort of wing it like we were suggesting. Um, yeah. I did want to talk to you about a certain topic, but we <laughs> – Post to work beta software uh, for it to work as a webcam, uh, at, like stream live. You're probably HDMI capturing – yeah, yeah. To just pivot to absolutely day <laughs> long, but yeah, they have beta software that lets you plug the some of the newer DSLRs. Uh, uh, you know, the, the the full frame ones don't work as well as the signal for mine. It's uh, it's you know, not that, that goes anywhere interesting. <laughs> no, that's a funny thing. Is like I can get so caught up in in that and music engine span for it. <laughs> that's the one yeah. thing. But you and I definitely could talk it's about very that. inside baseball. Very inside baseball. Yeah, there was a. There was actually a really cool. Did you capture? Sorry, did you happen to catch the Golden Globes this year? Earlier this year? I did not. Uh, well, Tom Hanks had a really co- good speech that was very. I think I saw the speech. I think I saw a video of just that speech because it went viral. Yeah, and, and he talked about checking the gate, which is a, a thing thing that we say on on set a lot. And I was like very impressed that he got that inside baseball about filmmaking and and. Uh, you know, not many people even hear that term. So. They're more or less able to still engage in a suspension of disbelief right? Uh, when they're watching a show. Whereas I can't watch anything on Netflix or any other film and not constantly go, that's not stage. I can see that's a dolly shot. Uh, it's a crane shot. <laughs> that's a steady cam shot. Right. That- uh, that's, that's a prime lens. Okay, they're zooming in. Okay, they, 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 they uh, that uh, kind of find a lot of... Hollywood productions, I'm not able to empathize with the storyline, with the plot. I don't see a lot of people like me. And maybe that's related to my right. tendency and not feel as immersed in it, uh, not just because I've been involved in the sausage enough and the making of it to uh, be able to deconstruct it like that, but also, um, and, and of course, if you do audio, then are doing vocals, and you're also like, oh, wait, okay, yeah, that's a that's a shotgun mic that's a uh they dubbed that they did right that post. that's uh, i noticed that a lot too like you could hear the difference in sound quality when you're it's a scene where someone sat down and you could tell that their mic got like kind of scrunched up underneath their neck and you could hear it like yeah. muffled and just like little technical things like that do jump out at me when yeah. having worked on set for sure and or i'll be watching old shows like star trek the next generation and i'm like okay yep yeah, uh uh uh, rx or any of these other <laughs> software back in the early 90s that you can run and, and remove the mouth noises i'm like oh yep there's a oh, there's a clickety right. smickety smack in uh yeah you know, troy's uh, dialogue there or captain picard when he's talking in these old shows so that's a that's funny did you did you happen to listen to um morgan freeman reading john lewis's final essay uh, I did, I missed that. It's really good. However, the, the, you could tell that Morgan Freeman probably recorded it on his iPhone, but it's still he's got that powerful voice like you do, sir. Yeah. You got a very captivating sound. Oh, oral you quality. Too and and he, you could tell his he had a little couple of mouth sounds going on because. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh he yeah. Was using his. Oh, iPhone. I'd be clickety clackety now if I was uh, in uh, uh, speaking to a uh, Sennheiser four six stuff. It had the worst time. I remember I was in Manhattan and I had just eaten salad and I happened to be right by the oh, no. uh, at Whisper <laughs> Sound booth. And so I'm there yeah, and it was just came out like 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 it was like the there were so many mouth noises and clicks in it, uh, that it's like it, it feels like it's peanuts. I will like be coughing <laughs> and I I can't I can't even put a sentence together for like but yeah. uh but Tay, hey, thank you so much for for popping in today. This is exciting. I would, the topic of today was about actors who kind of like go overboard for their roles, which is like mm-hmm. you know. sit into the margin mm-hmm. for like be considered the traditional lead. Um, I'm probably shorter than most people who get cast as a lead, and you're probably a little bit taller and like right. you know like 
like, and that's so it's almost kind of like or, or like a too short too tall like, like there's always like, the, like in this sweet spot in that cattle call and if you're a little bit shorter than that or uh, a little bit taller than that then people are kind of like oh well you're a type you're yeah. you're an interesting element you're not necessarily being a normal person uh you know walking this earth just kind of uh, uh living as a human being but you can be this interesting element this yep. sidekick this uh supplemental narrative two characters who are in that zone if you're a male of you know uh being yeah. five foot eleven you know six foot one or two or or if you're female being you know five foot eight to nine nine ten yeah. in that zone um which um i guess in some ways that he is I, yeah. uh, and how they choose human paintbrushes uh to tell stories that they believe will be received in the most mainstream way but then it's interesting to see how uh in, in, in growing numbers on it makes you wonder uh um yeah hollywood is very still very uh regimented and mm. I, and i don't think most casual watchers of film and television really understand the uh how small the uh group of people is who mm. do a lot of casting with you look at right. i don't know how many casting uh, directors are in uh, csa is that like 1500 uh fairly yeah, um uh this very um uh, I don't want to, want to say elite, but a uh, a a rick the human beings who will tell a story effectively. Being around long enough knows you. It's like yeah. if you're available to be in the orbit of some of these folks. I, I have an ACSA a casting director face. For the most part, when they are judging authenticity, when they are or, judging it's as real. Well, who or like a lot of the powers that be? There's like this where I don't. It's. Uh, Gina Davis is a big proponent of this. Now, it's basically when there's a woman on screen um, or a, or talking to another volition or if she is an A-man mm -hmm. together. So there's, it's oh, always yeah. centralized about the man, all about catering to the Bechtel test. I, the reality is I presented among cast just foundational Hollywood stories uh, yeah. who have, it sounds like very weird. To a lot more people, how do you relatable because of that? Myself well, well it's the largest appeal. I being a very happy go lucky broader stroke in terms of appeal. Uh, it's something about uh, what I'm doing with my body and what I'm doing with my happiness when I'm in the zone there. Right. That is more or verbal reflections on personal experience like we're doing now. Um, and that's not to say that, uh, yeah verbal essays or podcast interviews or talking about my own mental health experiences, my own psychiatric experiences, my own childhood experiences, but I, that that's not valid. And what level of popularity does it uh, achieve? It works against the other business. A thousand word essay about it. Yeah. And you know, the, 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 the science of viruses, they have to penetrate cell membranes in order to get in and reproduce themselves. And no pun intended about being viral somehow my music is able to penetrate more cell membranes than uh, a lot of other stuff I do, like podcasting or, uh, you know, perhaps being overly cerebral uh, or intellectual in the in the. Uh, right. uh, this is imagination, and that's the thing that, like, I really impress upon people. People really do want to put people in boxes and be like, "Oh, you're the guy that does the thing." We'll put us in. I just want to say hi to our prize special guest, I guess. And also, how long it's right now? I love. <laughs> Oh, thank it's you. Nice. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, how have you been holding up during this uh, coronavirus situation? You know, I've been okay. I've been blessed. There are a lot of people hurting right now. A lot of people. If 20 was going to go, then I mean, obviously it's it's out of left field. We are in a global disaster. Uh, on uh, whether we like to speak to it or, or, or the, I mean, there's no other way to put it. There's concern. Um, I have. Uh, you know, not just about myself, but, uh, you know, wh where do, where does this all lead? What is the next week? What is the next month? What is the non-eloquent and awkward? I don't have uh, clear words. Where do they in, in some ways? Um, I'm just wondering what else can ha happen this year. It feels... Well, that's so what, I mean, that, that's the meme. It's that, you know, like, uh, you know, yeah. uh, September has to... We need some giant whatever. kaiju. Be very cerebral and think about society. That just tends to be my state of mind. So, uh, yeah, it's it's not new, I guess, for me to kind of think of. I think what I person that I can be take care of mm -hmm. to 
uh, that's the only purpose I have found right now is to be like, okay. what can I do during this time to just push positivity and constructiveness and inject that into the world. And I just want to give a shout out to Jimmy James Cordova. Uh, sorry, you got to get back to work, but thank you for joining us. Well, you did. Jimmy James, our heart right now. Uh, and, uh, hope no difficulties on YouTube. You could go over. Done that. So that's good. Movies, general. Just it's it's very true like i get this thing a lot where people say oh well you know i'm kind of jealous because you have this look you know it's never really worked for me looking like i have <laughs> growing up where i did but people are like you know you've got a look you're gonna you could do commercials and and um, and then yeah. they cast you in usually white so it's like a lot of times like and and not to uh be looks ethnic but like oh okay you have blackish hair but you know you're not you're a skin tone uh, you know, right. my skin tone, I'm obviously biracial, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, so like we, we're kind of in the ethnic, but, uh, you know, it's almost kind of like, uh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, if I kind of feel like a lot of times when they're looking for quote unquote black, uh, yeah. the context of a Hollywood commercial or a modeling shoot or whatnot, they're I not don't get those roles. For, yeah. They're, yeah. But like a African black is a different right. category that rises differently. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's there's definitely um, Joel, but it's uh, it's tone like color to my webcam, which is actually hopefully is let me just close that. Yeah, we're talking about Taze on Day today. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This is a surprise. I'd actually requested to talk to Tay, but um, we just made it happen in the last 15 minutes. So it's, it's working. And thank you guys. If you guys have any questions for Tay, let us know. Um, Grace Jones in the 80s album cover black. Yes. Yeah, album cover black. Yeah, I hear you, Will. Yeah, if you guys have any questions for Tay, let us know, and uh, we'll continue the discussion. I'm really excited to, to have everybody here. We do this every day, and I'm very excited to, uh, to chat with y'all. Um, yes, it's Ron, sorry, I did have a beach day yesterday. I was rela maxing and relaxing and ch cooling all chilling outside of the school, and it was fun. I rely, I'm very tan. I got very tanner. I got a tanner is what I usually say. Um, today we were, we can still incorporate extreme actors, but if, uh, if y'all on, let me put a little message out here on discord. Tay Zonde has joined us. Let's see. And I'll put a little link in here, twitch.tv. Slash. So in case you're on Discord right now, I, you know, you've seen that, and you'll come over here. Um, how am I supposed to follow this? <laughs> a on a later. Oh, tomorrow? What are you what you talk about? You gonna you gonna bring it home tomorrow? You gonna bring it all home? gonna be you're gonna close the week out that's gonna be fun kevin james made me think of fat guys get hot women i'm waiting for leah rem for my leah remney ron pertis says says uh yeah like well hollywood you know it's funny because the age of the guy doesn't ever matter you know represent like you'll say you know george clooney would be 50 and be flirting with someone who's 30 and we're just like that's that's fine that's okay you know she's 30 she may as well be dead <laughs> in hollywood terms <laughs> basically oh we're gonna we're gonna have a talk tomorrow angie so so guys think up some of your questions and let us know this is a nice surprise i see we've got some friends of ours in discord I'm off to the side here. I'm only like on the side of the camera. It's very, very fun. Let's look at some of these trending topics while we're we're waiting to patch back in with Tay. So some of the trending topics, they're going to try to disband the NRA, guys. The whole National Rifle Association is going to be taken down because of all their indiscretions and their BS. Hey, bro, man, Mary on on Instagram. Guys on Instagram, if you're you're not able to hear Tay, it's because I haven't been able to patch him in through because this has been a surprise visit, which is awesome. And so if you're on Instagram right now, go over to twitch.tv slash Aristotle Full Throttle and you can watch the rest of the interview. 
I'm about to see who's excited to see the anime. Go dance. Okay, okay, here we go. My headphones now, on. Now I'm not just uh, holding my... Uh, I look like I'm way bad. This makes you look so sad on it. Now you look like a child. <laughs> rolls. Um, Young. Uh, is younger. I do have some great crack. That's true. Uh, with my personality as an act, even a uh, creep. And very relevant to the oh, center. Oh, <laughs> but oh, yeah, uh, I got you. And it's an older white dude uh, in social convention. We don't expect, um, actually, uh, you know, w women and, but I feel like, uh, there's is, uh, an element of being alpha or worn. You have a very feminine face. You look, you have very feminine accent. I'd be like, hey, you know, I, I love <laughs> circus aspect in some way, nation of human attributes that we have not seen. I don't think it's that rare, but it has right. not been represented in pop culture, especially well, things incidentally happened in the two, which was, it's such a, uh, it's reached aware of now. Maybe we're just paying more people. Well, there were a lot of people who, 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 and I thought it was a six year old braid. Uh, didn't uh, seven eight years old and then watch layers to uh to revisit me as a mo have uh sort of I, I don't know if i would pictured you holding uh much maybe well-meeting people uh but very much going talking about and and That's chocolate cool. rain sort of has a <laughs> received comedically to a power taken away from you it was kind of like as a political ballot until that there is a uh, what i in moment Politically, is that that, uh, and I say this in the not really introduced. Right? <laughs> he always and, and then uh, grew up mostly in Minneapolis. Whenever I can, uh, my mother was often, and, and I was kind of the royalties of a song. If you have two songwriters, then only half and half. And when I became in, in American society, and ninety percent of the way there, uh, um, America, so to speak, uh, because receiving about uh, in law enforcement interaction for parents, like uh, uh, acknowledgement had. Right. was and so it's sort of like i'm living an adulthood that is um yeah in a real grew up in in my own family like i grew up so i have this that's very would not is not also in oh. growing up but it's like to the part of your identity in america you get all of the benefits of just being put sort of like as uh the way canadian looks comments um <clears throat> I'm, I'm, uh, it's I, I haven't really gotten there yet on, on the, uh, <laughs> I, I suppose it'd be a little bit late to get on the TikTok trend. Uh, Me now, too, but, yeah, I, I have... but I find it yeah, a, pretty, um, a pretty good basic filmmaking platform because you could sort of make clips and, and change the order of them. And yeah, I, you know what it is? I, uh, I never really blew up as someone who was a person who, a lifestyle, uh, content creator. Uh, yeah, someone who share I'm doing in my house, uh, somehow of mine that appeals with the world being very focused on lifestyle content. Instagram is the same way now where, yeah, you might be a musician on Instagram, but you're sort of expected to do a, a you know, uh, good to see you or uh, I made that sound like such a father, like, yeah, like <laughs> good to see like, you, son. Like that, no, that's exactly what I, I do on the Instagrams. I say, hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah. Okay, next fan. Good. How are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, yeah. well, that's a, that's like, some people need so, of mm -hmm. engagement and popularity in 2020, where you need to have that lifestyle sharing and that availability, or at least the perception, uh, because I know a lot of people who share their alleged lifestyles and i know their life and i'm like okay well <laughs> well we'll leave it at that but there needs to at least <laughs> be a presentation of sharing your life and vulnerability and this is what i'm doing every day this is what i'm working on yeah. and um i don't know i mean i went viral at a time in 2007 when you could make a three-minute video and a four-minute video and yeah, as a one-off thing it could go mega viral that's not usually the world that no. content creators themselves in in 2020 share i need to uh be authentic and, and i've tried doing it i'm just not good at it uh right. is my own self-critique it's not really my strength uh being interesting in sharing my lifestyle and then it's like well do i change my lifestyle to try to make it seem more interesting than it actually right is <laughs> i don't feel yeah. like it's an authentic i feel like i'm lying and not being authentic yeah in that way and so, um, yeah, I, uh, that's been my think, uh, approach for sure. Like I, I've noticed that the, the TikToks that I've done that went viral, I mean, that's, I think that's the best 
best approach because it's going to be too much mental energy, too much like emotional taxation to try to step into a world that isn't comfortable for you or isn't real for yeah. you. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, I just want to, in a particular context, does that mean you're excluding, denying the other racial identity? That's the thing, Condi Land. That's really the dilemma. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, no, that, that's, and that's very much the perspective. I think of uh, that I was raised very much in that as a family value, that we are a cosmopolitan yep. uh, family. And uh, don't you go uh, out in the world or at least come back into this house calling yourself a black man or a or someone who is limited to just one side of your heritage because your heritage is cosmopolitan you are genetically uh just as much you know german and and a little bit of irish and that side uh and uh that's that's difficult when i you know walk out in the world that's threatening <laughs> as, uh, right exactly it's it's as, just as you get all the benefits be, of being black kid. when you're out yeah. on the street that's what i always say i'm like i get all the benefits of being black and my parents came of age uh right. per se. but you know in, in the 70s and it. kind of this 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 moment of believing that a racial utopia was pending and you know obviously you can watch different historical documentaries and read different books uh uh, uh 13th on netflix by but is a, is a great one uh but uh, I think their generation is still very much sort of in this vision of, hey, uh, true egalitarianism and racial equality is something we can do or at least create that space in our own family mm -hmm. and the way that we live our lives. Um, and it's it's tough. I'm, I'm not sure. Like, I, I, I want the dream of my parents' generation to be true. And yet it's right. not from a policy standpoint, from a looking at the reality of the world that we live in. From a systemic uh, standpoint. From, systemic standpoint. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not, uh, it's funny, my, my, my little Fitbit buzzed at the same time as your alarm and I'm like, what is something going on? <laughs> like, is there, some, what is going on? Is this like a, an alert of some kind? It's been rich on people who have more melanin in their huh. skin. I was looking yeah. at the research on this because I purchased a Fitbit and I might still have it in the other. Maybe I returned it. Um, uh, and it wasn't d detecting my heart rate as right. uh, a, a very active. It was spotty. And I didn't, because I'm a thin person. Your heart or, rate is two. Yeah. Or I, somehow I'm alien uh, in, in some regards. Then I was like, oh, wait. Um, this is not, I'm not the only uh, person for whom this might be an issue. And the right. technology that at least some of the models use, it's not, you look at these scientific studies, uh, it's not as accurate seeing through uh, melanin in a person's skin and detecting the heart rate. And then I'm kind of like, do I post this in an Amazon review <laughs> and actually say, you know, this seems like a great product, but I seem to be one of the people who I don't know if I have too much melanin on my wrist or if I'm too thin, whatever alien uh, attributes it does not I have. Detect. Not, not detecting my heart rate. But that's. Uh, but then I. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, well, but not to, to wrap up the story. Then I realized wait, that's a great way for uh, probably either the manufacturer or some other. Uh, quote unquote good Samaritan to go through on Amazon and flag my review as being racist because right. somehow uh, there's almost sort of this idea of like, well, any bringing up of race or talking about uh, uh, yeah, mentioning being black or feeling uh, well, and, and <laughs> it's, it's so true. There's two things I wanted to kind of speak to that in general, a little bit from what we were talking about before, which was um, just being biracial multiracial in america um for my my experience it's just like you were kind of saying you want to incorporate all of the different um heritages that you celebrate in your yeah. family and i want to do that too it's a, though definitely where i grew up fixed yeah <laughs> but, but it's oh like, absolutely so it's like wait a minute where then where am i if i'm not this i'm not that where do i go and then another thing when people say you know, just mentioning race. Race is something that we should talk about. Why not? It's like it's a thing that we can actually uh, discuss, and if we discuss, we can maybe understand. Therefore, it's racist. Yeah. And I feel like a lot yeah, of times. Yeah, somehow you somehow. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like okay. a lot of times people say, "Well, I don't see color. I don't see race." And it's like, 
to me, when people say that, it kind of sounds like they're like, can't we just be all white then? Can't we just be <laughs> like, yeah, it kind of sounds that, like that's that. That's basically what it about to. It's like, right. hey, you know, can't we, can't we just believe that society is genuinely good and that the origins of, uh, uh, the the way of things, the status quo, everything that uh, caused us to arrive at what we experience as prosperity is is righteous and OK. And yeah. like, well, um, uh, no, <laughs> well, can, can we just, just start uh, from uh, zero? Well, it's, it's, it's like, no, well, we have to kind of like go back and I, fix this. I hear people espousing that perspective who are themselves uh, in some ways. Uh, yeah. Uh, suffering from some of the consequences of systemic inequality or a, you know, there is really no American left if you compare what is considered leftist in uh, in Europe uh, to, you know, the American political spectrum. We're all kind of a, a very much, uh, uh, from a political standpoint, uh, focused on the right uh, side of the spectrum. So it's like when, when you bring up something like a housing crisis and I'm like, hey, yeah, you know, there are plenty of places in Europe where, you know, they uh, uh, they tax vacant housing units and so there is a zero percent vacancy rate in those places and as opposed to a four or five percent vacancy rate like you have in places like los angeles where you have more than a hundred thousand uh, uh homeless people uh yeah. and, and i think other in southern california um and and you know I, I point out these things and and there's such in american political dialogue there's such uh radical leftist ideas and they're, they're, or, or berlin or some of these other places uh so it's um uh, it's an odd conundrum sometimes when I hear that. Well, the status quo is great. And I'm like, well, okay. I, and I feel like a lot of it, a lot of people just don't have the information. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, I mentioned to them something like, you know, the National Association of Realtors has lobbied for unlimited infusion of foreign capital to uh, basically turn the U.S. housing market into a global stock exchange where that's the reason Americans are priced out because <laughs> wow. you're not uh, in a closed local economy. You're having yeah. investors uh, uh, from all over the world bidding on the property and often cash buyers buying the house that's in your neighborhood. Wow. Uh, and that's artificially inflating prices and obviously local politics, whether you're city, it's your city council, or your mayor or your state representative, uh, you know, construction, real estate, uh, uh, are, are two of the most influential uh, uh, business interests yeah. on a local level. And so Real in many ways, sure. our local politicians are very uh, much uh, complicit in that system. Wow. And a lot of people, they, they just don't see that type of information, which is a basic fact of American life. Yeah. Presented on CNN, Rachel Maddow or uh, you know, CNBC aren't framing the truth of American life in that way and so there's still very very basic things that are just kind of like oh i don't think people know and so when they're defending the status quo and saying hey yes you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps and can't we all be great and just celebrate what is and celebrate oh there's a new condo going up and and obtuse for like a, a lot of people in society sadly to just say you know they need the big dumb guy at the top going like very bad that's dumb I don't like it. <laughs> they need it yeah, like kind of compressed. I don't think the truth is complicated. I think it's just yeah. unsaid. Right. Um, and, but that was, uh, but thank you for illuminating that. Cause I, I, I it makes sense. Ex exactly what you just said. And I, it's just hearing it is like, Oh, well, yeah, that does make sense. Doesn't it? <laughs> and it's, yeah, I mean, I mean, no, I mean, I, I, it, well, and, uh, Sort of because a lot of there's a lot of it justified, uh, obviously, you know, and, and through outrageous uh, uh, prompts, you know, whether it's the, the murder of George Floyd or Breonna Taylor. And um, and sometimes it's difficult for me to speak to that very valid and ferocious energy uh, and say, OK, um, yeah, a lot of the aspects of the system that has ultimately uh, institutionalized this type of wrongdoing. They're esoteric. They're mm. nerdy. They're policy details. Right. They're things like, oh, the National Association of Realtors has lobbied against open bidding on 
uh, real estate transactions so that they can, uh, you know, th things yeah. that are just kind of like line items. It's almost like that little writing in the medicine bottle. Right. Where it's like you don't necessarily read through all of the side effects of everything that happens. May but, grow yeah, wings but, and shoot lasers from eyes. If you yeah yeah no but but it's that type of thing it's like 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 yeah. a lot of the actual implementation of these systems of oppression it's in that may grow wings or shoot lasers from eyes yes uh, byline of the side effects of policies yeah. that are implement, implemented and that's like the the entire housing crisis I got you frozen here for a second hang on. Tay's frozen for a minute here. Hopefully he catches uh, it. You know, you also need to oh, there we go. kind of dig and look at that fine print of the medicine bottle and be like, wait, uh, where did this come from? This is yeah. kind of this is a very detailed and esoteric and complicated reality that Oh yeah, uh, like I still don't understand subprime loans. <laughs> I, uh, I still can't wrap my head around subprime loans and I'm, as soon as they start talking about it, I'm like, I'm with you. I'm with you. And then, like thirty seconds later, I'm like, I'm I'm lost. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, how. no, no, no. I, I I can explain some pride loans in like thirty seconds. I mean, the, the, the general yeah. idea. Uh, uh, behind the sub, the quote unquote subprime. Subprime is sort of a. I, I'm not going to say it's a dog whistle, but it's this idea of. Uh, banks should look, and this is sort of something that came in vogue after the dot com boom and, and bust, and you know, in the early 2000s and, and late 90s. I said, like, we need to get more people who are perhaps minorities or uh, people of color who might not ordinarily quite. We need to yeah. get them uh, to have home loans. Right. Uh, and so, from a policy standpoint, you have Congress, you have Democrats, Republic, uh, some Republicans kind of in this thing that, yes, you know, banks ought to, the solution to yeah. uh, the uh, unequal, unjust creation of disproportionate white wealth in America right. is to loan uh, people of color and who, it, it, instead of like an actual talking about a reparation and saying, wait, a lot of that kind of came from redlining and FHA racism and the racist war on drugs and uh, a lot of racist privatization. And, and that was the origin of that. No, the solution to that subprime loans, this idea of, well, we're just going to loan money to people, whether or not they really qualify from an income perspective, whether right. or not we really it's predatory uh wealth and income and so we'll allow banks to be more lax mm -hmm. uh and then suddenly you know when there's an actual recession and when uh it turns out uh wait uh consumer income and especially the income of uh, uh you know uh minority consumers and marginalized right. uh, consumers mm -hmm. is not growing it has not grown since the 1970s suddenly 2008 2009 like oh we have this crisis now where these people yeah. <laughs> actually not able to pay for this um it's and, very and so, it's very predatory because you know they're like well we'll we'll take five thousand dollars as a down payment for a home <laughs> you know like that was it yeah. was not that was never the solution the solution right. was to examine the actual origins of mm -hmm. uh, prior social quality why is there such a uh a disproportionate uh, uh a, a wealth gap a wealth delta uh in american society mm -hmm. and um can we address that in uh, a, a way a that's redistributive? You know? yeah. yeah, in a meaningful way, uh, as opposed to just creating more debt. And it's almost sort of like there's, there's sort of this uh, uh, um, presumption that the only way in which uh, social services can happen or uh, um, the only way in which the government can implement services in the United States has to be through the private sector or in some way that benefits the private sector. And that's sort of a, a um, you know, that's, that's not necessarily the line of thinking in uh, uh, other places that uh, have a more social democracy uh, mm. thing. So uh, that can be an inhibition. This is something we should definitely work toward more equality on all fronts like that it's just it's yeah. really it's going to take a while let's see i said well, i would take a difficult subject and that's why it was they were so advantageous at uh, making so much money because a lot of people didn't understand how it worked and then they were, they were just like yeah good don't worry about it don't so worry about like, how it works it's like i'm approved absolutely i'm, I'm yeah. approved i'm going to go for this and uh right. yeah it's uh um and, and at the end of the day, they decide they bailed out the banks. They didn't bail out the families. They That's didn't. Exactly. Uh, well, 
what you should have simply done uh, if you really wanted to it, it, the solution to the subprime mortgage crisis uh, uh, yeah, in a way that might have been a little bit more egalitarian and actually redistributed uh, some of the ill-gotten wealth that was part of this great divide in American society would have been for instead of bailing out the banks uh, uh, who were simply uh, uh, at a loss uh, uh, writing off these subprime loans, you could have bailed out the families, the consumers and say, hey, uh, yeah. uh, uh, we'll we'll pay off the mortgage for the consumers and the consumers simply own the house. Uh, and that would have that would have given those families uh, that a place to start uh, yeah. wealth. Uh, it would have given them a head start in American society, it would have allowed them to then, you know, if they had to mortgage their houses and their kids to college, it would have helped generate generational wealth. Yes. Uh, which is had resolved the subprime uh, loan uh, crisis that way in 2008. Yeah. But that was not the table. They were like, oh, no, we, we, we'll cover the banks and the bank is going to own the house and, the, and auction it off, whatever. And it's like, well. <laughs> that goes back generations. I mean, American society is very much like that. There's there there are generations of wealth that, uh, frankly, black people in the United States were never afforded until like the seventies. <laughs> like were, you weren't like people. If you're black in America, you weren't allowed to. You did, just didn't have wealth that extended beyond behind the seventies. And there are so many people in America who have generations of wealth that go back two hundred years. Yeah, and and even if you, I mean, if you watch, I I keep harping David Verney's Thirteenth on on Netflix, but it is a great uh, documentary. Just kind of a, yeah. uh, it, it really summarizes in an hour or two a lot of the historical changes. Because even after the nineteen seventies, a lot of uh, uh, interventions happened that, that that kind of made it difficult for. Uh, uh, you know, minorities and, and, and women and other categories of marginalized people to catch up uh, in terms of uh, asset ownership. It's it's. It's a sad truth. Let's let's catch up on some of these comments here. Will says, uh, I feel like I'm listening to All Things Considered on NPR. Big compliment, honestly. <laughs> Very cool. That's that's a goal. NPR is great. Um, Defcon Zero says, I also experienced exclusion like that, but it stemmed from cultural differences. My mom and dad listened to rock music and liked British comedy. I was always excluded for liking white things, in quotes. Um, yeah, and as Defcon mentioned, uh, he's also mixed, or he or she is also mixed race, raised partially by white people, and this talk is healing. Oh, it's Malin. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, Malin, for uh, for adding that. It's it's very true. It's it's just like having a, an identity in the United States. Like a lot of people, definitely consider the European ancestry the identity. The United mm -hmm. States when we really should include the mosaic because a lot of people say for well, instance, I mean, uh, yeah. well, oh, well I would, uh, just the the musical Hamilton for it's mm -hmm. I'm like <laughs> I'm like way into it lately I've never saw it before and I just was like wow this is a really cool representation of modern America telling America's history and Lin-Manuel Miranda who wrote wrote it and starred in it grew up in Washington Heights Manhattan Mm -hmm. And if he were to put on a play in his school when he was a kid, this is what it would look like. Repres this is exactly what it would have looked like representationally when mm -hmm. they were like, I'm George Washington, you know, or I'm so and so. Washington Heights. Yeah. Like that. So to him, it's nothing new. But to America, they're like, wow, look at this culture. And I've heard people say that they feel like they're that they are um, appropriating when they watch Hamilton and I'm like, no, 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 no. The whole point is this is part of American culture. This is not like, we're not like it's their culture versus their culture. This is an American art form that we can all partake in. And that is like really, I think what the point of, of the visual representation of Hamilton is and the, the musical representation, frankly. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I listen to the soundtrack. I, I don't think about it. <laughs> seen it through it, and um, so I feel bad. like I, I very like my heart with musicals is very much in a lot of the Broadway shows, uh, yeah. with the uh, 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 focused on perhaps more belty and operatic singing, like the Phantom of the Opera and and uh, mm. uh, Rent uh, that I Andrew grew up Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, who I mean, and of course I'll say that you know they. Say, <laughs> Uh, you know, and of course, a lot of those you know, those weren't necessarily the most diverse uh, 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 shows in terms of casting uh, or the plots of stories. Uh, Rent was, you know, uh, pretty good, but um, yeah. uh, 
you know, in Les Mis. Well, okay, that's very much an element of its time. French Revolution. So you'll see, I mean, you'll see casting in, in Broadway and off-Broadway. The cast of African-Americans is, you know, Jean, uh, Jean Valjean or Javert or, or uh, uh, key characters in that. Um, it's interesting. Um, or Robert Guillaume has... played Phantom for a while. Yeah. Robert Guillaume in the mm-hmm. uh, early 90s, maybe? Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. interesting because uh, uh, this whole question of uh, to what extent do uh, African Americans need white culture in order to heal themselves and move forward into an egalitarian racial future. This is a very, very old question. Uh, mm. You know, Scott Joplin, uh, you know, ragtime. He, he, you know, he wasn't really famous in his life, but he came, became famous uh, decades later. Um, uh, wrote a musical, *Trimonisha*. Uh, which is uh, very much about, uh, you know, in the language of his time, which is very quaint now and very imperfect, uh, but more or less speaking that, okay, well, uh, freed slaves or former slaves, uh, you know, sort of need some sort of cosmopolitan way of marching onward uh, by incorporating both white culture and, and, uh, you know, know, the best of uh, Afro-American heritage into Mm -hmm. some new future. And uh, so, you know, when I was a kid and singing, uh, you know, uh, I loved the Little Mermaid when I was eight years old, but I wasn't thinking that, oh, you know, uh, Ariel is a body dysmorphic white female <laughs> uh, who is in a movie that I don't think there were any black mermaids in the Little Mermaid. No. Uh, I, it, if I, I think I've rewatched it and I've kind of tried to like. If well, you've had Sebastian, the sort of. The Jamaican yeah, that is, crab. Yeah, but he wasn't, he wasn't crab. Come on, I mean, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, they, they, uh, but you know, I, I wasn't thinking of that when I was eight years old, and I was not thinking of not being white or not being female. Right. Uh, I just enjoyed going. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, it I get it wasn't until. I, again, I, not to repeat what, rehash what I said earlier, but it wasn't until I was a teenager. It was like, oh, wait, I'm living in this world in the 1990s where there aren't a lot of in-between role models for what it is to be a masculine black male and affirmed right. and intellectual. You have a caricature like Steve Urkel or Jaleel White, uh, who is a, mm-hmm. an obviously a ranged actor who's a, a dimensional person far beyond that character. But, I mean, he yeah, played Urkel and Urkel. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> well, Stefan, uh, that was it. Yeah. Stefan uh, and but, Urkel. Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember, uh, uh, you know, because I was a huge Star Trek fan and a fan of, you know, uh, Data and Spock and, uh, but also Avery Brooks uh, in interviews because he was uh, Captain Cisco on Deep Space Nine. Oh yeah, loved uh, it. Uh, and and he had a career. He he had intended to do that role. He was a professor at Rutgers and was very successful. Uh, and uh, he says in uh, later interviews that he took that role when he found out that it was about a single black father raising a uh, black son mm-hmm. as a single father. And he's like, you know, there aren't a lot of portrayals of this in, I think it was 1992 is the year that uh, yeah. Deep Space Nine uh, launched as a series. Uh, and he's right, there weren't. I mean, there, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if you wanted to be an affirmed, there was such a fear of uh, black masculinity and it being hyped as you know every night on the news but growing up in chicago it was like oh there's the latest murder uh from uh uh you know, the black people in the projects the gangs uh and the projects randomly shoot there's another shooting another later and it was narrated right. as uh the pathology of society uh out of the reagan mm-hmm. years and uh, uh, you know, into the Clinton years where you had uh, additional policies that were draconian to expand the prison industrial complex was narrated as this problem of these very bad brown people in South America make Always. these very bad substances like cocaine right. and and they infect the minds of the brown people the in brown American cities menace. and make them and, ma- and make them ape-like uh, mm. uh, to a point where the, uh, that's the terrorism and that's the terror and that's what's leading uh, the evening news. And so me being 13, 14 years old, uh, like uh, walking down the street, uh, growing up in predominantly white suburbs, and trying to figure out like, how do I live an American right. life? Um, how am I perceived? How, uh, what how, is it? how am I perceived? It's like I can, I, I certainly don't want to be that. I don't want to be whatever that portrayal mm. of uh, uh, that is. And so I guess I have to lean into being super nerdy and intellectual. I'm not uh, large. I don't present myself like an Avery Brooks or like a uh, Denzel Washington, or like some of the few masculine black role models who were not caricatured mm. uh, in uh, in that negative way. 
So, yeah, I, I, I really didn't have uh, a clear place in the world that was represented in pop culture. Right. Um, I kind of had to. Uh, and it's interesting that you bring up like sort of the out. brown versus the, the white situation on TV, because I can't think of a time the last time that the United States bombed white folks <laughs> overseas. I feel like when we look at the enemy, it's always like, you know, like this Middle Eastern sort of brown menace or however it's represented. It's just like, or it's, you go back to Vietnam or the Korean war. And it's like, before that was when we were sort of bombing the Germans or the Nazis out of, we, that yeah. was like the last time we had a white on white war. <laughs> and I feel like as much as Russia is, has been doing to undermine the United States, I it, like, I feel like what all we ever do is just go bad Russia, <laughs> you know, and it's a nation. Of, I mean, I mean, you could argue that Co I'm trying to yeah. kiss Kosovo in 1998. Yeah, I was thinking of that actually. Mike Clinton there, or I'm kind of like, uh, but but I mean, yeah. the, the category of white, it's uh, it's not a monolithic. Obviously, it's a yeah. fiction. It's it's based on phenotype, and that fiction and the way in which that fiction. Uh, mm -hmm. operates and is brought into the notion of being a social truth and the right. uh, material reality of being a social truth is different in every place, different in every society. Uh, but, you know, obviously there is a, you can generally articulate uh, and, and Eurocentrism, uh, you know, the uh, uh, political destiny of all parts of the world being uh, centered around uh, the act and what yeah. uh, it, it has come to mean in each individual place. Um, but yeah, I, I nerd out on this stuff. I guess I, I, no, it's, it's, I, it's I, was, awesome. I was at one point, yeah, I was at one point in graduate school pursuing a PhD in, uh, uh, uh American studies, but, uh, <laughs> I accidentally got famous on YouTube and uh, <laughs> kind of found the Academy to be a little bit hypocritical and a lot right. of its structures. And it didn't really seem like a way to have a life of massive consequence. Uh, it's very unlikely that as an intellectual, I would become a Henry Louis Gates Jr. or Noam Chomsky or someone who's at the top, top tier. And even yeah. those people who are at the top, top tier as intellectuals, most people don't you know, you, you necessarily know who they are. Uh, right. So um, yeah, I think I, I uh, when I saw a ticket to having more public life yeah. and that was perhaps of more public consequence, um, a more I, influential I kinda, platform. I took the I took yeah. the exit from uh, being a university professor. Uh, though fair. it's interesting, That's... I find I find now is it's sort of like uh, having passed that moment of of heat, so to speak, yeah. or at least of that that peak virality in 2007, and now sort of being experienced as this elder statesman of right. how the internet used to be, or the example <laughs> the, the example you, that, that that parents now show their children when they're wondering like, oh, how did YouTube use? This is what YouTube used to be like. Right. This is this is ever this is what YouTube was. It was novelty. It was short videos. It was people doing, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, disruptive novelty uh, uh, type content. Uh, this is what YouTube was like when I was a kid. Uh, now I find myself sort of, uh, if not uh, uh, directly in an explicit way so far, sort of it seems like I'm angling back into that mode of, of being the teacher, being the professor, being the uh, the instructor, even yeah. though I didn't really necessarily intend to. I mean, I left with a master's degree. I didn't like. I, I think you. I think you'll end up with an honorary doctorate at some point because Will over here in the chat is like, oh, we could have a Dr. Tay Zonday, a Dr. Zonday. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> we could. I think that that's. A, uh, I think we already do, essentially. In effect. Oh um, my gosh! Well, you to, bestowing. I, I'll, we'll have a ceremony and everything. <laughs> I'll, I'll draw it on a. Let's see. I got a piece of this, paper now, right here. This is. Uh, now, this is a question. I'm sure you've gotten this question your whole life. Aristotle yeah. is not a common birth name. No. Is there a, a genealogy to that? Have you been told? Um, well, I get a different story every time I ask my parents because um, I, didn't, I didn't name myself yeah, <laughs> Aristotle. Yeah, obviously you did not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's, like, it's funny because um, my oldest brother is Christopher. My second right. oldest brother is Eric. Mm -hmm. And then my mom just says, well, I had Christopher, I had Eric, and then I had Aristotle. <laughs> that's, that's basically the explanation I, I got. And my younger sister, Veronica, of course. And, that's, uh, and there you have it. That's the explanation. <laughs> I can't tell you. Yeah. 
Interesting. I mean, my parent, my, my middle name is Nerere, uh, you know, after uh, Julius Nerere, uh, who was prime minister of Tanzania uh, oh, wow. for many, many years. Uh, and um, it's seen as a political pan-Africanist, uh, mm -hmm. someone who tried to bring Africa together. Um, although in some ways, you know, his critics are you know, like most uh, leaders who who uh, came into vogue in in, in colonial and post-colonial Africa have uh, have criticized them for uh, uh, you know, various uh, ways of being complicit with some of the processes of European intervention that were not always uh, uh, a net benefit for every party. But you know, uh, I feel like it's just um, yeah, America. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't want to stereotype Americans or say that, but but I feel like the world. And this is just from kind of engaging a lot of you know the people I see. I think I'll, mm -hmm. I'll characterize it as that. Uh, there isn't, there's just and not a lot of education about the wider world. They're about like, oh wait, right. yeah, Africa is actually an extremely, extremely complex place with thousands of Af uh, with eth eth ethnic groups and languages. So many different groups of people, yeah. Complexity. And, uh, but it's very mono just, monolithic, it's to, in a lot of people's minds. It's yeah, just it's Africa, like, uh, where it's like, the country, yeah, the country of Africa. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the continents used to be together in this supercontinent called Pangaea that the dinosaurs lived on, and yeah. then uh, you know but it's like it's South, like South Africa, Africa, Libya, Egypt, uh, yeah. you know Kenya, Cameroon, Madagascar, off the coast. It's there's so much see, going on. They, they not see anything in common between themselves. Yeah, <laughs> like it's... like like they're completely completely different, and and that's why you know, Americans have trouble understanding yeah. uh, the, those dynamics in another Somalia, place. Like yeah. wait. Yeah, there is a, a, a terrible, obviously terrible uh, history and genocide in Rwanda. But right. uh, yeah, I, I, there's an every, everyday American like, OK, well, what is the uh, the historical nuance of uh, uh, Hutsi and Tutu uh, uh, identities, which were in many ways racialized identities when you might look at it from the outside and be like, well, they seem to kind of look the same. It's like, no, 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 no. Right. Oh, uh, it's very, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> like in the historical uh, origins and genealogy of uh, that place and many other places, uh, uh, there's a tremendous uh, you know, yeah. uh, uniqueness and differentiation. And um, yeah, I think it is. And uh, there is there is a blindness to that with people outside of outside looking in. There's a very distinct demarcation between the groups of folks, according to them, the, those diff, those groups of people in Rwanda, they were like, oh, well, if you're in that group, you're on the other side. If you're in that group, you're on the other side. And and from the outside, people are just I feel they don't understand the nuance of it. And that goes on in, in like uh, Iran right now. That's going on in in different parts of the, the, the all over the place that there are these different groups of people that are very opposed to one another. Outside looking in, we kind of just push it all. Uh, sadly, we we make it, we conflate it all, um, and uh, yeah, it's really drawing those distinctions, or at least understanding the histories of the different groups of people. And but but, yeah. but at the same time, like I, I I'll also say, I mean, you, you could you go the opposite way. Like if if you visit Iran uh, as an American. Your primary identity is not being black or or it's uh, American, you know, yeah. Asian or or you know a, a, a white or whatever uh, racialized identity uh, informs how you fit into American society. You're an American. Yep. Uh, like like and very very similar to anybody else uh, in that context uh, who mm -hmm. would also be there as an American too. Or if you uh, and, and so um, it's. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I often think, uh, because I haven't done a lot of international traveling, but even just going to London a couple of times, Berlin once, uh, it, you know, you, you go to these other places, um, especially places where there's a little bit of a stronger political left and a bit more of a social safety net. Mm -hmm. And uh, you hear about, you can read about it on the internet, you can, as much as you you read or or whatever uh, uh, persuasion, the algorithms on Facebook, et cetera, feed uh, uh, the things we want to see that we engage with that affirm our egos and, and tell us that we don't need to think about anything different. <laughs> right, exactly. But if, if you if you actually, yeah, you know, the, the number one thing I noticed walking down the street um, in London and the UK, uh, and you have to be. This is something you have to feel. Uh, 
when you're there. And I'm not saying it's, 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 uh, it's it doesn't have any problems or obviously they have their own uh, you know, dynamics of racism and, and whatnot. But I felt like there was this palpable absence of being absolutely terrified that your life could be destroyed by a medical bill right. that randomly happened or the random misfortune of a violent uh, of a shooting or mm -hmm. a violent crime. Like yeah. it seemed to me like somehow, regardless of where someone was in, in British society, uh, that they had less of a fear of mm -hmm. just that random and, and totally preventable type of misfortune uh, mm -hmm. afflicting them. And it just seemed to be uh, something I noticed in the energy of the place. And I need to silence my phone because it's blowing <laughs> up and I don't know what all these people and notifications are. Right. Uh, well, well uh, can it, do you have about 10 more minutes? How, how, how much time you got? 10? Oh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, cool. um, I, I can end whatever I'm not, I'm just kind of uh, appreciating, okay. but just to very quickly finish that thought. I yeah. think that uh, yeah, if a lot of American vo voters had a chance where they just had to set foot in Berlin, uh, st spend a week there, spend a week in London, and then come back and just kind of see how, you know, there is a bigger social safety net and nobody's freaking yeah. out. They still, have they still have rich people. They still have cities. They still have a lot of these other hallmarks of American society. It's, it's just very true. Uh, everyday, everyday people aren't uh, yeah, they're, living they're in existential in dread. Terrible that, fear. Yeah. Existential dread. <laughs> Of that that their totally whole life could just disappear. Yeah, yeah. A, a There's a that, that, incredible stuff happening. That's a very present in in like a lot of people's minds. I you talk in everyday conversation with an American, and they're like, "Well, I don't have health insurance, so X Y Z," or "I don't want to do that because I don't have health insurance." And that's like a yeah. thing that is weighed in decision making as an American. Whereas, if you live in yeah. like say New Zealand or some other country that has like a really good socialized healthcare system, they're just like. Well, I'll always be fine, so I can at least pursue my dreams, and I can move forward, and I could, yeah. and and there isn't this existential fear that like I will be financially ruined. Like I'm watching a lot of people who spend weeks and weeks in the hospital because they're suffering from coronavirus or COVID nineteen, and their yeah. bill is one point six million dollars or something like yeah. that, and and, and it's just. It's and and it's like, but what, what on earth is it? And you, and you look at those hospital bills, because I've gotten a, a, a couple of six-figure hospital bills uh, in, in my life. And you look at them, wow. and it's like, okay, ba a bandage, $75. Uh, dose <laughs> yeah. Tylenol, Tylenol, $40. And I'm like, yeah. um, <laughs> how exactly is this a system that, that uh, uh, is working? And, and it's odd, because what really worries me uh, Aristotle. It's also very is, litigious, it, like because, but hospitals are like, well, we're gonna run every single test on you, and oh, charge yeah. you for every single test, so that you don't yeah. later sue us for mis malpractice or missing anything. There, 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 okay, so, there, yeah, there is that, yeah. and you know the that that will that will be that'd be the comeback of, uh, yeah, uh, you know, that's certainly the a conservative perspective in in some right. ways that uh, well, if we had tort reform and lawsuit reform, then we wouldn't have that healthcare wouldn't be as expensive. But you know, Democrats <laughs> are all you. Know, about these consumer protections and li liability. Uh, and that's why we can't do business cheaply. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, what concerns me uh, is not just uh, that, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I don't have health insurance. I can't uh, see a doctor. Uh, I can't uh, uh, you know, get the care I need. It's I feel like there's almost this second part of that self narrative that I see in a lot of Americans. It's like I don't have health insurance because I didn't work hard enough because yeah. I made this mistake or that health mistake. insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, or like, but, but this whole narrative like that somehow it is your fault. And we right. live in this meritocracy in which the misfortune, uh, you know, uh, it, it's almost sort of like there is this slippage where if you talk about systemic oppression as the cause of your personal misfortune, uh, I feel like there is uh, a uh, an undercurrent of uh, not just right wing American culture, but just uh, working class American culture is like, shut up, stop making excuses. You, right. you, you, you didn't you didn't make enough money. Yeah, you didn't. OK, well, you should have worked harder. You should have uh, you should have invented a better idea. You should have you should have been like Elon Musk if you if you'd invented the right idea. Uh, then you'd have right. health insurance. And, well, uh, that's the and, thing. And, and if you're a billionaire, you're like, well, I 
made all this money myself. It's like, well, you made a lot of people made that money for you. If you were working minimum ma- wage, it would take you thousands of years <laughs> to make a billion dollars. So it's not necessarily a direct <coughs> proportion yeah. but, but, of but your but personal I feel, effort. But I feel like sometimes we're like when you go uh, to someone who is a, 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 a who might be struggling and are kind of like, hey, do you want to get angry at uh, these systemic factors that contributed to uh, the misfortune in which uh, uh, that you're experiencing, there's almost kind of like this pushback of like, wait, no, I'm not experiencing misfortune because of uh, uh, systemic factors and whatnot. I messed up. I made a mistake. I didn't get the job that I needed to do. I didn't. Right. Really, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm tough. You know, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll vote for someone if they say they're like for more service or whatever. But but I'm right. not going to get I'm not going to get mad at the man. I'm not going yeah. to get angry at this idea of uh, that that the system is bad or right. that I am having a difficult time because the system is a boogeyman. I'm not on board with that. And I feel like there's there's almost sort of a, a silent undercurrent uh, when you try to mobilize to actually change some of the policies that are destructive, some of the uh, 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 political realities that have not benefited a majority of people, you kind of run into that blowback where it's like, there's sometimes a reluctance to acknowledge that uh, perhaps you worked as absolutely hard as you could. And yeah, you may, we've all made mistakes. We've all done dumb things. It's like the old Geico commercial. We all do dumb things. It used to be the <laughs> tagline of the commercials that they ran on TV. Um, but this, in spite of that, you know, uh, that's not what differentiates you from somebody who has a mansion, a yacht, and a swimming pool. That's not what differentiates you from uh, being able to access the basic services that any human being any ought, civilized to be society. To, yeah. ought to be able to access in any civilized society for their dignity and, yeah. and, and to acknowledge their worth in the humanity. And um, I feel like there's uh, still a lot of um, sort of kind of a lot of, of, a lot of pain and a lot of almost sort of uh, unconfronted um, leaning on this notion of meritocracy and the idea, well, don't complain about it. It's just, uh, yeah. don't, don't be an excuse maker. Yeah. Don't, don't make excuses for your own failure. You're responsible. To, to, and you have to, to go, sort of piggyback you better? on that too, um, I just want to catch up with some of these comments because there's a really good lively discussion going on about like the genetic diversity of people on the, the African continent versus African Americans, which the African continent continent has a much more genetic diversity than the African American and African Americans also have a significant proportion of European genetic ancestry too. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> so like, um, that's very true. And let's see, Will says, um, let's see, taking a step further with colonialism versus ethnic homogeneity with some populations. Um, very true. Condi Land says that's so true, especially for you, people who have kids out of wedlock. People blame you for your own economic circumstances, but single parents shouldn't be struggling nearly as much as they do. Um, yeah, it's, it's it, there's an interesting uh, backdrop to this all, too. I feel like Christianity, and or at least the values of Christianity, and people like to say America is a Christian society, and there's like these mm-hmm. Christian values that it was founded on. But there is um, what I think r- the right will often do is weaponize a lot of these Christian values, quote unquote, and say, you know, the meek are more virtuous and the people who don't have money should be happy about not having money. And always like, there's this kind of like you're in a place and you should be happy that you don't have money and you should be happy that you don't have power and you should be happy that you don't have wealth like, or, you know, and so on. Well, I, I was sort of this idea that uh, uh, it's not a boogeyman or an institution or a government who is in control of your life. It's God and salvation. And if you pray and if you are yeah. uh, pure of heart and if uh, uh, you are pure in your faith, uh, uh, then you will uh, receive the bounty uh, uh, right. that is, uh, you know, the unlimited, there was sort of this idea of the unlimited bounty and healing potential of Christ. At least that's, right. uh, how, how I was raised in, in the Christian well, religion. I, I, I'm uh, saying that uh, because I feel like there's a lot of people who are proven 
to not walk in those footsteps who have wealth and power are and they, oh, oh, but, but mean, they project absolutely. this image of purity and of tithing and of being oh, like this of course not person and and those folks in particular are weaponizing it trying to continually subjugate and marginalize people saying no 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 no. it's it's cool that you have no money and that i have all the money i'm telling you how to act but i'm not going to follow any of these rules behind closed or, doors or, or, or just that like what what dictates our relationship is not money or prosperity it is our common faith in the salvation of right. of god and it's almost sort of this this other place that almost sort of like in a a sort of like socialist utopia oddly enough this this sense that well we are all the same uh, in the eyes of jesus and saint peter and we are all praying to the same god and we are all uh coming together and you know you you, you better not say anything uh, untoward in that context was like, wait, wait, okay, yes, that like the nation's capital is named after someone who factually owned and enslaved people with brown skin and worked mm -hmm. them to death their entire uh, from cradle to grave. Um, wait, okay, we well, know we're having a church service. It's Christmas. Let's uh, <laughs> let's celebrate being all together in the uh, light of God and Jesus and togetherness. And and it's kind of like, well, wait. Um, I can can this have any type of engagement with uh, worldly matters? It's like, well, no, I think it, it, a, a big part of uh, is I experienced uh, faith religion growing up was this disconnection from worldly matters. And if you dared to insert something that was terrestrial or worldly in that context, it's like, well, it's all in the hands of God. It's all uh, God has. God has a plan. It, it, yeah. it happened. It happened. Therefore, it must have been uh, right. in God's plan. Or maybe if it, or may or if it didn't happen, then, then there was still sin in the world. There was still there was still evil. And there's it's still just kind of out there is this, you know, Satan striking uh, yeah, in, in the moments that he randomly uh, strikes. And that is very difficult for us to deal with. But all we can do is uh uh, stay still and and be still and steady in our faith in in Jesus and know that God has a plan and and <laughs> and and you know that was uh, um, that's the thing that's the thing so it's kind of like um, uh, and, and I think you were specifically trying to speak to ways in in which you know that, uh, religion can uh, uh, you were almost going to speak to a certain hypocrisy uh, that was yeah. more obvious but it's like well okay they're clearly haves and have nots and it's uh, yeah. I'm, spe yeah, I'm definitely uh, specifically talking about those folks who are like it's not caught. Just the will of God. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 caught doing all of the bad things, yet yeah. they tell everyone else to continue being faithful and continue doing. Continue these being things. faithful. It, it was absolutely in God's plan that you have to work 18 hours a week at Walmart and right. uh, to make yeah. me and, a billion dollars. And, and, <laughs> yeah, and and and, and 10 hours a week at this other job and a third job that you're trying to uh, put together and you can't get health care from any of them. Uh, uh, because, yeah. uh, yeah, like, it's like, well, okay. Uh, right. I, you know, and, and honestly, I, uh, because I still consider myself, uh, to, you know, to be spiritual, to be Christian, uh, uh, to the, uh, extent in, in my own relationship with, you know, faith. Uh, but I yeah. also don't consider myself to be anti-science. I don't consider, uh, a lot of the articulations, uh, and appropriations, of that faith and spirituality. I'm not a biblical literal literalist. Um, you know, so I, I see it deployed in a way that I, it's very alienating, um, yes. you know, both me and I think uh, other people find that, that notion of religion, very, uh, alienating. Uh, we had a really, it's out the, the way the world actually is. We, we had a really lively discussion last week with, uh, our guest last a week ago, Monday, Jake, a, he was uh, he's studying to be a, a military chaplain and we were talking about Jesus and his if you guys want to check that video out that's out from last week and Jen the fierce speaking of Jake a uh, Jake's wife Jen the fierce says when something large scale happens to society like the Great Depression or disaster people will acknowledge external reasons one might be in poverty but the rest of the time there's a moral attachment to it right exactly just as Tay was saying earlier it's like you're blamed for your for your, for your lane, uh, undercurrent is at least in in uh, some aspects of American society of blaming yourself. Of if you don't have, uh, you know, wealth or at least basic services and can't meet your needs, it's it's your fault. You didn't you yeah. didn't uh, 
you didn't wake up out of bed and, and do what needed to be done to make it happen. And it's kind of like there's and I think that is tied up with certain notions of masculinity, of empowerment. And then it's sort of like you know, if if you start to critique that and say, hey, wait, there are uh, bigger, more uh, um, unfair things happening at a level beyond that level of individual liberty and individual choice that constrain your life opportunities, then the, the, I think, again, like I, I said earlier, that's kind of experience. It endangers uh, certain mm -hmm. narratives of masculinity and validation and all of these things that can be very, very heartfelt uh, in people's life experiences. Uh, so, no. Uh, yeah. But, no, it, it's 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 very true. I mean, people... <clears throat> It's just that the the folks that might be blaming also, you know, we blame ourselves for our station in life, but there are people at the top, you know, that are constantly like, well, you got to work harder. You got it's like how many hours a week can you work? Can you work 60 hours a week? At? It's it's weird that they're blamed for doing way more work physically, more hours put toward work um, than say someone who's at the top whose money makes them money like they just kind of have money. And then that money mm. makes money <laughs> and they they have all sorts of investment plans and stuff like that. So it's, it's really not a direct proportion of how much effort you're putting in it. And, nah. and that's just proven really. Yeah. But, um, but then, I mean, there, 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 also, I mean, there are layers of that too, where it's yeah. like, okay, well you, you look at, at state pension funds and uh, uh, yeah, which in some cases have been fought for by labor unions historically. And well, okay, they're invested in the market too. So theoretically they're, they have pools of money that uh, sit there and make money. And then it's like, well, you look, well, okay, who had access to union jobs historically? Well, okay, the disproportionately white people uh, who had access to uh, good state jobs with uh, good pensions. Uh, even, you know, you look at a state like California where, gosh, they have social services here up the wazoo. And uh, a lot of them are uh, either union jobs or jobs that are that are paid from the state pension system. And on one hand, you look at that like, well, okay, I guess is I guess that's a good thing in some ways but it's like then i'm kind of like um uh, i'm not necessarily saying that there aren't good stories and good consequences yeah. to the way that things are done but um a lot of the people like uh uh yeah in, 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 in social i'm very much a, a of a belief that uh, social services uh should generally be financially grounded in the local economy of the neighborhood of the block that uh, they are serving or that the service is being provided. And I think that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about policing in America. And, and yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, the biggest problem is that you just you have officers who work in areas that are not uh, uh, economically prosperous and they they raise families in. Uh, in the suburbs, in some other place that that is, and it's like, well, well no, mm -hmm. it, are there really no qualified people living on that block where it's like that salary can go to uh, enriching that population that is there? Yeah, uh, all of and these it's directly services, their community. You know, you they're they're yeah, directly benefiting yeah. their local you, you can, community. You can just give that money to someone in the community. Uh, same with, uh, I mean, a, a lot of the, the implementation of social services in California is this idea of like, okay, well, there's this office run in Sacramento or this other place, and uh, a lot of professionals, who, some who are very good professionals with very good motivations, wonderful people. Uh, but it's also kind of like, is there nobody? personally yeah. who can who can go to you know, like like have their kids go to the same school and so it's it's interesting how even in uh, in California go in some uh, some other areas but it trends blue at least more more recently uh, not all of its political history is, is, is that but uh in, even in that case it's kind of like I look at the implementation of social services and I'm I'm kind of like is it so profane to just have the idea of maybe giving people money who are in these communities or paying like keeping mm -hmm. that money local because it seems to reinforce the evacuation of wealth from right. areas that are you know you look at very real all of problem. South, all of South LA basically yeah. from downtown south to Long Beach mm -hmm. and you wonder okay why is that generally considered Inglewood and Crenshaw and all the why are those how do they become what is yeah. called or called economically depressed like well get divestment uh, mm -hmm. systematic divestment of uh, resources uh, not spending money in need of social services in, the, in those neighborhoods and then the people providing those social services generally are not necessarily living in 
those places there yeah. in other places. And then you right. look at something. As, you see you see municipal incorporation is something that's very racist, where you look at the shape of Los Angeles and they, they have the port of Los Angeles, which is right next to the port of Long Beach, and then this tiny little little strip of land to yep. get down there and make it part right. of the city. <laughs> that is a very uh, funny little... And, yeah, Tay yeah, is talking about, if you look at a map at if you look the, at of a map, the well, In the city of Los Angeles, there's this little tendril that goes all the way down to the port of Long Beach, uh, Beach yeah. and it's, it's a port of Los Angeles. Which just is, to make it I contiguous. It's just basically a freeway's width that just goes yeah, straight down. Uh, yeah. uh, so that the city of Los Angeles can incorporate the tax revenue of uh, the, the port of L.A., which I believe the ports of L.A. and Long Beach are like it, at least like in somewhere like in the top five largest ports in the world. Like they have a yeah. tremendous amount of volume. But it's evacuating that wealth and that tax revenue from uh, people who live yeah in that broader area and saying, oh, no, right. that's part of the city of Los Angeles, and we're not really interested in incorporating all of this other uh, divesting. It's very much like gerrymandering. It's 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 a gerrymandering Absolutely. situation. It, it's, it's gerrymandering by municipal incorporation, and that happens all over America. That's the default. That's the yeah. that's the rule, not the exception. Uh, right. And so, like I say, you know, uh, when you look at the implementation of uh, these systems that ultimately implement oppression, it's not just about getting you know it's it's great and valid and important to get angry at uh uh you know outrageous uh um spectacles and out, outrageous uh events uh when they uh, uh, that, that should mobilize and should anger people but that anger also has to be paired with an awareness that there is complexity and there is we're surrounded by all of these smaller details uh, yeah. From a policy standpoint, where it's like, well, who's actually thinking about like looking at a map of Los Angeles and be like, oh, wait, that's that's municipal incorporation. That's ooh, that's some uh, that's a a tremendously racist thing uh, that very much contributes to uh, yeah. a lot of problems. Uh, and social history, services. And Los Angeles does have a very racist history. Oh, sadly. absolutely. <laughs> and social services and the way they're implemented. Uh, yeah. often contributes in some ways to evacuation of wealth from uh, uh, some of the areas that are serviced. So, um, and, and I think what the challenge in some of the cases that when you really peel the layers of the onion up and start to indict the bones and the guts of some of the systems, you are not just indicting uh, you know, people who are open racist or uh, you know, people who might be considered uh, uh, you know, right wing or alt right or not. You are indicting uh, uh, people who and institutions and organizations that have traditionally branded themselves lived as in a space of well, well, no, we're the good people. We're helping, and it's like I'm not saying that there isn't that intention, right. but let's look at the consequences. The structure, <laughs> structurally, uh, yeah. and uh, but it's I mean that's true. something like. That's something I don't even think, uh, I mean, that hasn't really come into, uh, uh, we haven't even crossed that line in my own family where it's like, I remember being 20 years old and I was so excited. I was coming to uh, 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 my father and mother and we were having dinner. I think it was at Old Country. Uh, I think they changed the name to Hold Hometown Buffet as a restaurant. And I had just started to learn about Malcolm X and uh, Bell mm -hmm. Hooks and uh, all these terms like white supremacy and uh, yeah. white supremacist capitals patriarchy and i remember coming in all excited saying i'm learning about white supremacy but I, <laughs> I know uh and uh, <laughs> that's a perfect um thing to my father was very about. very my father was very speaking of that on a in a structural way it was different than my saying well because you're white you're white and therefore you're bad is right. i think what he heard and he that's didn't a, know that's he a real didn't thing. know how to hear it any other way and i don't i still don't think um that uh a lot of people in that generation, including uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know um, people in my own family, that they're not able to hear a critique of institutions a and, and, an and identities in society that they are a part of without hearing that you're bad and your life is bad and your choices are bad. And it's kind of like... Tay, you've, you've struck a chord, so to speak, you being a musician, in, in me, because this has been something that I've has been very real in my personal life, where I've engaged with some of my friends. Uh, very, it's, there's a few that are trying, 
we're trying, and, and I'm giving space for a couple to sort of wrap their mind around the idea of structural and historical oppression and racism, a system that is a system itself that is designed to favor one group over another or the rest. And, yeah. and them, the, this, this friend in particular I'm thinking of, took that as me saying to them that they are bad. Mm -hmm. like, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. There's a system yeah. that has maybe favored people who look like you over people who look like me. And that, mm -hmm. is, that is what I'm angry with. I'm not angry at you per se, but they, like you said, like you said, your dad had a difficult time trying, like hearing what you were saying. It, it, they have a very difficult time separating that I'm not mad at them. I'm mad at a system that definitely favors like one group over another, which is yeah. is not equality. That is, I'm or, angry or, at or inequality. The, yeah, yeah. Or there's yeah. kind of like the, I, I think there's sort of like that tendency, like you start going down that path and it's like, okay, well, what are you going to show up in pitchforks and, and confiscate my house, confiscate my right. car, confiscate. It goes, con and it's like, wait, 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 can we at least yeah. have a, like, like we're not like, th 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 this does not, automatically teleologically uh lead to uh disaffected leftist or disaffected people of the world coming and confiscating uh you know your, but there's that uh, your, 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 must, that your mustang and your 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 harley or whatever else you might own and believe that uh you earned it's like we're, we're, not, we're just at least trying to a lot of the reactions even entertaining the idea that uh, not every baby is born at zero. Yeah, it's a chocolate rain lyric. And a baby born will die before the sun. Uh, even entertaining that discussion, uh, suddenly, like it, it, it can be a a trigger point. It can be a it's very triggering. Uh, yeah. A very reactionary reaction is like, well. Uh, I guess I, you know, we should all live. We should all be socialists, and you know, you should all just just confiscate my, me, me, and my family, and everything we work for. And you're gonna come and take it, and then I, and that's why I need to go buy guns and be uh, uh, libertarian and and fight these people who are trying to come for my stuff. And it's right. kind of like, well, <laughs> they're, they're, well, they're that's the thing. Just some that's, in between, some way. That, to that's the that saying, you know, f um, when you're used to a, a privilege, equality feels like oppression, and that that yeah. I'm witnessing. In real time, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. No, I'm just saying equal. I'm saying equal. And that seems very scary to some people. I'm just like, no, treat this person as you would treat this person. And it's a system that definitely, if you look at the numbers, this these groups of people, the, their numbers don't look as good as this major group of people in the United States. And, and or, that's, or, uh, or at least at least be able to have an honest conversation about the ways in which your personal attributes that you have no choice or had no uh, uh, yeah. you know uh, decision making uh, have benefited you. Like I can talk about how I am. I second that yeah, was the truth. You, you said uh, you benefited it, from it, being from. Uh, uh, I benefited from from being a cisgendered male. Uh, uh, from being you right. know uh, as. Um, as opposed to someone who's you know, a transgender, who's not, who has a, a, mm -hmm. uh, a different gender identity or different uh, path in affirming who they are. Uh, I can speak about that. And that's not saying that you know, I, I'm i bad, wrong, but, but let's at least critique, let's be able to have an yeah. honest uh, Be able to recognize be certain privileges and certain how society is, dude, like there, there are so many disadvantages. Yeah. But like, you know, well, I have to check my to be able to self refer on YouTube. Thank you guys for joining us. There's lots of chat going on there. Um, also, people of color haven't shock to white friends. Yes, it's very true. Like, they were in my life. They were like, not you. And depending on where I am in the world, I have to think about it. It, it just comes as such a shock to some people that I, I made a TikTok. Every, people are wanting to hear the stories of people who, of color and they, they almost don't yeah. want to hear it at the same time of accept at once. And it's- it, It's, I was waiting, I mean, just exclusivity and re representation. Terrified in endless anthropology, a documentable increase in income. They they make like CEOs or uh, these business events. Or <laughs> is it that when uh, I'm just not- And measurably, I mean, like, oh. the 
the kind uh, of like a weird correlation. It's not like a causation. Uh, even if three million more people vote for the other person. Uh, so it's uh, even like things we don't nor- normally think of as uh, quote unquote controversial height, uh, yeah. quote unquote attractiveness from an anthropological perspective, attractive people. Uh, yeah. Get yet again. They they're more likely to get jobs. They're less likely to receive as as uh, severe sentences. Et cetera. A range of ways in which I may be person to yeah. you know, sort of that reaction that you say you get. This isn't just a meritocracy where we are, that benefits me in certain ways. Whereas that's very, that's a part of all of our lives, and mm-hmm. we should be MI or attractive yeah, and, and merits. All these other things. We'll have to try hard and recognizing that there are pro athlete. So stereotype in Hollywood. I'm really hoping that, you know, I go on the streaming services, I go on HBO Max, and then you scroll down and then like maybe a couple things down, it'll say like, some month to see how everybody, uh, no, oh, well, I'll let you finish your thought on Page that. of, hey, Black Lives Matter. Okay, let's get back to, yeah. Uh, Fading was like, I'm somebody on, on my phone, just kind of, I was surprised, like, June, where it's like uh, something akin to Ikea, specifically Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, uh, attributed to the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Uh, yeah, remember, even spoke or savage that and now was, uh, Muhammad Ali, at least politically, he went and going out on a limb, uh, not more. Uh, you know, there's sort of he, 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 Kaepernick Jail. thing, and it's kind of like, oh, it's more or less validate sort of as a, a thing that, you know, is played in Ikea. Uh, the people who are where are perhaps right. uh, people who are Can't. in many other places, our, our stories playing that on the intercom there. Like, yeah, it's kind of like it felt like it was a little bit like preaching to the choir, preaching to the, to the chorus. And it's kind of like, yeah, um, yeah we, I, yeah, I, I wasn't sure how to feel about it, but that's a, that's a valid question. You know, there was a, definitely a moment in June, uh, heading into July, where it seemed like there was this effort to acknowledge and validate uh, the reality that uh, 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 there are uh, there. That's a, it seems if and and uh, my experience of it was it's just I, like is wait a new, whoa is, <laughs> right is that's how I've seen there's it. A, a thunderstorm or tornado or hail. Or, it's like um, Whoopi Goldberg in the end. It's like yeah. He's been uh, on this note of representation. There could be question. That is, right. Uh, it has to be a black sitcom. When, when it happens, shows, I'm trying to think of it. You don't see necessarily representation. Black or you see or, a token. Yeah. Um, well, no, I mean, I'm just thinking like a, a movie like, you know, I don't even like anything going back to the 90s. It was like, oh, my, yes, I'm old. All my pop culture references to people of color. Uh, yeah. Well, Lord of the Rings, that's the Panther. That's like, oh, well, OK, that's. Uh, Modulating a little bit. Uh, I even had a friend recently say how when they were growing up, and they kind of said it nonchalantly, they were just like, oh, when they would have, uh, say, a, a black cast member, or, or at least maybe absentmindedly, or because they said when they would see a black person in this, or I guess they're just doing this politically, TV show, I was like... Wait, no oh, wait, wait, this you is know, a Family uh, Ties episode that has a, a, a yeah. black person yeah, in it? Yeah, exactly. like, I just... Like, what? But, but hold on. Yeah, I guess the perception the, the, the of Cosby show, the Cosby show. The Cosby show. I don't know if a black person ever showed up on Family Ties, but I remember that. I, but uh, Jen the Fierce yeah, has just, uh, genuine questions. Jen the Fierce asks, "I want, I want so badly to know how best to react as a white person that isn't putting more oppression on people of color that have stood out to you as valid." Uh, there, it's a double-edged sword. If you're gonna, from friends of mine, who. I knew we're an event, we need to do something about it. To me, seeing George Floyd getting murdered in the streets was like, as awful as it is for anybody to see, but to Breonna Taylor, to George Floyd, uh, very, very, like, comedians beat us up. Comedians make attack and use violence against black people in America. This is America. Not, not a new message, not a new message. It, it's no, I, mean, I mean, that's the point. It's like, I mean, uh, all I actually say is they don't really care about us. and. Uh, sort of big Michael Jackson fans who are black. A way to uh, be uh, super politically active and advocating for, for prison reform. And uh, so it's kind of like there, there is that uh, uh, question. And it goes back to that sense of my saying, well, okay, people are uh, awakening to this as though it's a new message. And like, well, yeah. it's, uh, I'm really like, but to answer that question, general rule, and this is the same for the infant experience, a way in which I, and just mm-hmm. speaking that truth I find to be affirming, and so right. I mean, I can I can mention specific, like uh, uh, Tim Weiss, W E I S S, I believe he's a uh, uh, he uh, speaks a lot specifically to the answer of the question, like if I'm white, how can I uh, 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 positively engage mm-hmm. this that I wrote in May? Because uh, occasionally I, I, I 
try and stay away from Twitter, but occasionally I'll still tweet things. Uh, and I said, uh, yeah, as a man, I need to be the first to speak up when women are victim victims, not just right. us. Uh, and there's an actual, that's a, that's a ma- massive thing that has been kind of going through my mind, where it's like, I, like I'm very aware post George Floyd, then, then like white folks are posting publicly, very aware that you're calling me because there's a guilt situation. Here. But I know I'm not in the when a, a, I don't know what a white folk person is saying to what other white folks behind closed doors. I don't know that conversation. I can't know that. Yeah, actually, what, with- again, like if, if I apply that question advocate for uh, the ways in w- without a room uh, who yeah. that might directly and immediately uh, affect personally. Right. Am I speaking to uh, the ways in which uh, you know, women are uh, multiply oppressed, whether it's uh, uh, whether you look at, at uh, dynamics like you know, then uh, not as much inclusion of the issue, not just when uh, I need to virtue signal and, and acknowledge and cause someone exactly. uh, who is around in the space to forefront when there is right. uh, not a uh, quote unquote token around right. of that axis of oppression. And am I speaking out on behalf of the uh, uh, these are uh, the, the term you don't it, it, the term disabled is not the term to use physical capacities uh when and, and, and i, I would hope yeah go ahead yeah no can do sorry was this so lively <laughs> i just want uh, so, sorry oh no i thought the interactions in which i feel most affirmed are yeah. uh when it's not just uh when a white friend who is speaking about race uh fitted from a certain level of privilege diagnosis being on the autism spectrum and, and having how that's a term that's used for our ways in which the world is calibrated to benefit that. Right. Like there are so many different nuances. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and I, I feel affirmed anytime that someone who is uh, not necessarily uh, directly able to experience uh, right. and unfairness that I experience acknowledges that unfairness acknowledges that they may be a part of or have benefited from that unfairness yeah. fairness that is uh, acknowledges most... that they are in a learning process yeah. uh, of trying to better themselves around that unfair have you as as I wanted to add to that is that as a person of color or as a person of sort you know everybody's going to be on their best behavior saying the nicest thing. Oh, absolutely. But, <laughs> so you're affecting the results of the outcome just as it, like a Schrodinger's to bring physics into it. <laughs> so it's like you're if yeah. you're a part in that really? room. Yeah. Uh, uh, but um, there definitely but some I think, I'm walking into. Yeah, walking into room like, okay, that's not the uh, necessarily the conversation that uh, would be happening if I were not uh, yeah. uh, right there. Case. And being, uh, but, yeah, it's very... It's something that I've definitely noticed my whole life where, like, I'm like, everybody in certain contexts. It, it, you know what it is? Counties or uh, uh, zip codes plus 20. I mean, it's okay. It's a really real war. It, it shifts. Like, <laughs> just, it's it a graph. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> but at the same time. And the, the question you asked, like, uh, what do I uh, experience? The right thing to say is they're, they're wanting right. to go a, a couple of minutes ago what? Uh, uh, you know, acknowledging inclusion and that hand to God, this actually happened. Uh, a do something about mentoring. And he said, yeah, you know, I enjoy, you know, men- uh, you know, whoever, like I might be, right. uh, term, like, <laughs> like, fire, like, fire like the word men. Yeah, yeah. Like fireman or mankind or police kind. So like he heard himself say the word mentoring. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I better go back and clear. Uh, okay. This is someone who is like, I, it's, um, yeah. And, and I could I could do like a whole we could do a whole like other hour or two of just talking about the the history of um, you know language and uh, yeah. trying to achieve social progress through language and right. fun to try to erase oppression by changing the language we use because at the end of the day whether you call a black person a Negro an African American a well, then systemic institutional racism that is a result of specific policies uh, mm-hmm. has prevailed and you can say that. Uh, you know, uh, changing the parlance from uh, fireman to uh, firefighter has not really closed the pay gap between right. men and women in the past 30, 40 years. Uh, right. There are a lot of ways in which uh, the, there has not been a policy dividend from that evolution in language. And so sometimes I wish when it seems like the idea of activism or social justice is achieved on this battlefield 
of the language that we use, I sometimes wish that there was sort of a, yeah, a greater acknowledgement of, okay, what is the track record of that strategy? And has that changes in experience of the economic reality of these ends that actually recently are people putting everybody is free now 150 years ago everybody now can vote everybody now you know it's just like there's these symbolic meaningful gestures yet the actual true change is a wave or several generations behind and it's and people need to realize that just because you change a law doesn't mean you've changed society <laughs> it doesn't mean you've changed yeah. or, or just because you changed the, the change the acceptance almost sort of this um yeah part of and, and i'm not you know, here to psychoanalyze or validate uh the sentiments of the alt-right or tea party backlash whatever you want to call it uh, um this fireic victory where it's like i it's like oh my gosh i'm i'm uh, i'm cisgendered male and, and of european descent and i have to be so on my toes all the time about not saying the uh, thing that offends this group or this group or this group right. and it's gotten ridiculous and overboard and um you know there uh yeah i'm not saying that that is a uh a fair or complete uh you know, looking at strategies and outcomes and results and policy outcomes um yeah. you know i, I, mean, I it, think and just to speak to that it's it's like there's a genuine unawareness happening there and to yeah. be like suddenly told suddenly told I mean, not suddenly yeah. and need to acknowledge the realities of these things so that we can move through this growing moment um and really yeah. but, understand each other but i mean and again like an and, and outsider uh you know i've had it, it, it raised uh it back Who's confused? But no, 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 no. Like that's like right. the, and uh, cast away with you know segregation yeah. colored person as opposed to person of color, and yeah. uh, like if you look at that literally, it's like well, uh, um, We're, it literally and kind of tactically, it it, it yeah. no language operates. <laughs> uh, you know there, uh, um, but like I said, there is a need to engage and acknowledge these things on a policy level, and it almost sometimes yes. seems like uh, the push to uh, make the battle about these things a battle of language, it's almost like a pacifier. It's mm -hmm. fix that. You know, mm -hmm. the, the oppression, it was a problem. It's our prosperity right. relationships, uh, the actual inequality between have and have nots and, and look at that uh, yeah. in society. We can, we can fix it uh, because we've been using the wrong words. We can use words that include, include everybody. And then, uh, you know, we're, still going to bail out the banks from the uh, subprime mortgage thing like, that's the thing people get so mad at people who are collecting 40 dollars in food stamps a week or something like that yet they yeah. ignore the the crashing of the like used and, money to bail them out well uh, and why is it so bad to just give poor people a uh, mortgage crisis it, it, nope. it can't yeah. it, it's like uh you know uh, these are policy choices poverty is a yeah. policy choice uh housing where crisis it's got is a, is, uh, uh, that that's where the change, to, where the change, to, definitely has to happen. There is awesome. not. A, I did, didn't mean to go to this. I was just I've been having such a busy week. And sure, maybe yeah, we could no come back and we ended up talking for like in what an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, episode, which is very true. <laughs> I don't mind that at all. Ed, we would love to have you back, Tay, and talk about all of these things because you're so well versed. You know, this is a really real issue that we had today are excellent. I mean, you look at in that, examine the systems like the entertainment, rethink about how we we watch things. And I mean, and part of, of favoring European features, traits, ancestry issue uh, ob observation around 25 creators, but it's they're underrepresented. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the successful the MKPHD and KSI and people who are very successful black creators are massively underrepresented. Uh, in terms of reason. So they created this thing called the UTB, uh, more in, uh, you know, have access to the right. community, uh, acknowledging that data. And, and uh, it's kind of like it was an odd moment because this was the same time around like 2015, 2016.
they've decided it's like oh, him uh maybe like we, we should it, do something the gay frogs and whatever conspiracies and and uh, you know uh, uh, the obama being real whatever he talked about was on youtube for many many years uh yeah. including during this period of time uh in in which uh, uh youtube black was a thing and another, another part of the company so it was kind of odd to be in that moment, not really confronting uh, open racism. Google and like there'd be, or you'd look up conspiracy theories about, well, uh, you know, autism is caused by vaccines or or whatever. You right. know that that was that would surface that all that information would surface. Uh, maybe we should. So, maybe we should surface. Be in a rabbit hole, black on black crime. Let's show them more of this and more of this and more of this and more of this. And that's yeah. why the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center did a study. Uh, I believe it was 2018 on how people get radicalized by Google because they enter with one little kernel of a prejudice uh, yeah. where they heard like, oh, you know, uh, uh, black and people are more violent, are born more violent than white people. Absolutely. That's a problem. Right. And Google would keep showing them. And, and yeah. uh, I believe that study is called the radicalization of Dylan Roof if someone wants to Google it. But yeah, I blew it up into a whole other thing. Well, well uh, it's very true. A lot of it's siloed. We Facebook, you go on Facebook and you're going to see all of the things you like to see because it's all curated yeah. for you because they want you to be engaged with them so that you can see the stuff that goes I, right. exactly who I am and why I'm in the yeah. majority. I, uh, I guess a good thing is to um, address your blind spots if you can. I mean, by nature, they're blind spots. So try and help other people. We ask a lot of questions that we we know the answer to, or we, we ask questions that we want to hear validate our belief, <laughs> but we need to actually ask the honest question. We, it, we've all been in this uh, situation. Uh, how do I talk to black people? And yeah. Ava DuVernay's 13th on Netflix, you might, yeah, yeah, I, yeah maybe that's the way their people speak. Uh, you're interested in learning about a lot and not in challenge. Volumes and volumes of information about this, uh, volumes of studies and, and, yeah. and it's, I mean, it's a great time to be an author and and all of these things. I mean, on today, which is awesome. And it, yeah. this has been an awesome, spontaneous uh, situation. It's just funny because if you guys go back to the beginning of the show, you'll see that I'm like, oh, I got a message from a special guest here. Let's see if we can make this. It's always great to have yeah. you on. Hey, wait, we have good energy, good energy. Yeah, yeah, uh, great conversation, great questions from uh, the peanut gallery over here, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, and, and we're just nerds. We like to hang out in society. I mean, <laughs> this uh, frame this wind up in a way. If you guys, I definitely urge you guys to kind of go back and, and listen to the whole thing. Have it on as a podcast. Have it on in the background and, and enjoy it. And yeah, Tay, it's, thank you so it's much. A pleasure. Angie talking. Uh, awesome. Yeah, we're getting some great comments here. Great feedback. I appreciate you, man. And uh, thanks so much for stopping you. in. Thanks for having me. Right. Indeed, I will. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Aristotle Full Throttle. You